Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. Uh, we're looking at a mod today. This mod is called Splatter. So you can see I've got it installed here and it does have a dependency which is lib color settings. Uh, this is purely aesthetic. Is it going to change your world? No. Does it add a little bit of flavor? Yes. Uh, so this is my um, V12 testing world. Um, when we did a bit of combat and we were testing combat automation, which is better than expected. So I have got MIDI QOL, etc. installed, but none of that has an impact on the splatter mod we're looking at. Uh, this is a Ripper 93 one, uh, and it's a free one. Okay, so no, uh, no money's expected or needed for this. So let's just start a little combat here. Um, throw them all in. Yes, I've got combat carousel track. Um, carousel combat tracker installed etc uh, we can roll some initiative and uh, we can do a bit of combat let's just kick this off okay so goblin is going to go first but, but which goblin we'll come to that in the next video we do actually all right so let's move this goblin up here we can go and attempt to attack Soriman. give him a go and keep this over here for us out of the way give him a Give him a scimitar attack. So we've got the automations and stuff on we looked at in the previous video. We make our attack. We can roll our damage. Takes damage. This is all completely normal. Let me just clear that chat. That's all good. Let's skip through to Soriman's go. Soriman is tough enough that he can kill these goblins in one go. But let's uh, let's see if he manages to do that. Come on, bring up the Soriman. Thank you very much. Uh, let's do a two-handed quarter staff attack. So, because it's a versatile weapon, in case you didn't know, I know there's people new to Foundry probably watching this. Uh, holding shift and clicking that weapon is going to do a versatile attack. That means he'll do two-handed damage automatically. There it goes. And the goblin's dead. But look what we got around the dead goblin. We got some blood splatter. So we've not had that before. Let me move him out of the way. Look, blood. That's what splatter does. Okay, so I mean, it's not completely obvious. Uh, it is. Let's um, let's drop Soriman down and put him on five health. He's now got a bleeding stat. Uh, and if I move him around, he's leaving a little blood trail behind him. Okay, so that's another little thing that comes from uh, splatter that we can do. It's all pretty awesome. So let's have a look at some of these settings for this mod. I want to divide my XP, thank you. It's, it's a really simple little mod, but it's very nice. So this is Splatter. I'm in the wrong place. Of course I am. Uh, let's go down and look at these options. There's quite a few options for such a tiny little mod. Here they all are. So we can change the colour if you want to of the Blood Splatter. Make it darker. You can make it blue. You can make it black. Whatever you want to do. Now bear in mind that you're not going to change colour based on type of creature. Okay, so it's just Blood Splatter. So chances are you're going to leave it as a default red of some description. Um, enable blood splats. So draw blood splats on predefined health percentage thresholds. Yes. Violence level. Now I've got it on the lowest at the moment. Let's put that all the way up and then we'll test it again in a moment to see how horrific that is. Okay, because mine are quite minor, you know, even where they've died. It's quite minor, little splats. Uh, clean up. This is really useful. I've got mine to zero, which means it won't clean up anything at all. Okay. Um, but remember about impact on performance, not just for you, but for your players as well. So you can set this slider that will say, well, hang on a minute. After we've got six blood splats, start deleting the oldest ones to keep things relatively smooth and running. I'm going to leave all mine on for maximum gore. Uh, walls block, block blood. Makes sense. I'm leaving that on. A blood trail. So that's what Soriman is leaving behind him. He's leaving a little blood trail. Um, now this says automatic blood colour. Change blood colour depending on creature type. Now I'm not exactly sure how that works. How does it know? How does it know? Is there something in the background? Maybe I'll need to stick, stick a different creature out and find out. Let me close that in the background. It's annoying me. Because um, goblins are certainly coming out as, as red. All right. Um, blood splats threshold. So draw blood splat blood splats under this percentage of health. So I dropped Soriman down to a certain amount of health and I dropped him down way below 50%, but you can adjust this. So for my uh, my settings in MIDI QOL, 
I've got on Sorryman, you can see it came up and said bleeding and it's got this. I basically said under 50%, um, apply that to say that he's bleeding. And now my blood splat threshold is also 50% that says basically once he drops below 50 health, it gives him the bleeding thing and starts leaving blood trails. You might want to set that much lower. You might say 25% is more accurate and appropriate for what you want. Um, we got a scale of those blood splats. So in theory, violence level is going to be more of them. Uh, and the scale is going to be bigger. Let's put that right up as well. This is going to get ridiculous. We've got a delay on how long it is before we um, actually put that blood out. And you can see it says it's delaying milliseconds between damage dealt and the blood spray. Useful if using animations. And it suggests if you're using automated animations, you use 1750 for that. Okay, let's do that. Uh, do we want only blood trails and things in combat only? Um, probably, but you can, it's up to you. Um, data path for actor's creature type. Data path for actor's custom creature type. Data, uh, data path for the actor's current hit points. So these are all standard, straight from Foundry. I don't know why you would need to change those, but you might do if you're doing something more complex. Uh, and at the bottom here, there is an option for wounds system. So there's certain games that actually have a built-in wounds system. D&D 5th um, Ed doesn't have that. Um, I kind of got my artificial wound system on just to show when creatures drop below 50%. So, you know, there's, a, there's an indication that those creatures have been quite badly injured. Um, is 50% correct? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Set it to whatever you like. So those are the options. Let's um let's do some more. Now I've got my blood splatter on. Um, mine's restricted to combat, so let's uh add just these two in here. There we go. Let's start that. Combat. And Sorryman's going to go first. So, sorry, got both selected. Sorryman's going to come up and give this goblin. He's just leaving blood behind him because he's still wounded. Uh, so Sorryman's going to come and splat this goblin. Chances are. He's going to kill it in one blow. <sighs> of course you didn't, you absolute muppet. Let's try that again. We allowed to cheat, that's fine. No, we're going to fail again. C come on, sorry, man, it's a goblin, kill it. <laughs> and my rolls were terrible. Amazing, eh? What is going on with this? Come on, sorry, man. You can do better than that. So apparently I can't manage to roll more than a five. Um, he will eventually. Another three. Well, that's broken, isn't it? Come on. There we go. So there was a much... Blimey. <laughs> so there was a much bigger delay there before the blood splatter arrived and it's huge i mean that little goblin can't contain that much blood surely <laughs> and apparently still be alive <laughs> but i told you it was going to be extreme <laughs> let's uh, let's move sorryman off who's bleeding and see yeah look at the size of these blood trails he's leaving now <laughs> yeah that's pretty uh possibly a little too much right <laughs> and this goblin who's critically injured will be doing the same so yeah, I've said it to the maximum that I knew that was going to be silly. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that silly. But it's a nice little mod. Um, adjust it to however you want. Will I use it? I think I probably will. I think I pro I got to the wrong place again. Uh, I think I probably will, but I'll keep my violence level quite low. Um, I'll keep my blood splats uh, a bit more reasonable. I want them to be. I want them to be visible, but not. <laughs> not look like the uh, inside of a Hammer Horror movie. <laughs> it's a bit much. Um, and I'm going to leave my blood splats the same colour. Now, what you might be thinking is, yeah, I've got, great, I've got all of this. How do I get rid of? <laughs> How do I get rid of this? When you change scene, um, or you re-log, in fact, that it will reset it. It will disappear. So even if you've not got it to automatically uh, sort of remove, there we go, it's gone. It cleans up so it does clean up after itself as you change scene and things like that but really nice little addition i quite like it um just adds a bit of extra doesn't it now if we move sorryman around now uh 
Yep, so it's not no, it's not leaving the blood trail at the moment. Because we're out of combat, we've changed scene, it's reset everything. Which is fine, because now we're wandering off not in combat. We probably don't want to be leaving blood trails everywhere. But you can leave on, or rather leave off that setting that says in combat only. If you want him to be leaving goo all around town, you could do that. Um, and you might want to use that for them to following the trail of where the monster went. Yeah. Hey, just one last thing before I go. Nearly forgot to mention uh, the manual blood splat. Yes, it clears everything when you've left the scene. Um, should point out, on the left-hand side here, there are a couple of options under the actor token, and one of them is to clear blood manually. But there's also a blood splat. So if I select this goblin, I can click blood splat, and it will apply my blood splat whenever I like. Let's give him another one there. So even though we're not in combat, he's not bleeding or anything, I can just apply them if I want to. Um, so again, it might be a way that you want to use that to reveal trails uh, and, of course, clear blood, which just remove all the blood from the scene. So I nearly forgot to mention that one, but that's quite useful to know that you can mid-scene clean it if you want to. You don't have to worry about, you know, changing scene to clean it or anything else like that. Anyway, just thought I'd better add that. See ya.